The CDC recommends that all girls starting at 11 or 12 years old get vaccinated against cervical cancer. It's a disease that kills 4,000 women each year. But now, two studies just published in the Journal of the American Medical Association are raising new questions about the safety of this vaccine. Here's ABC's John McKenzie. Hey, welcome back. Free it's a China. dilemma for millions of parents across the country. Whether to vaccinate their daughters against a sexually transmitted virus that can cause cervical cancer. It's for her own health. Um, I did it. Gardasil, a series of three shots given over six months, has been heavily promoted. That the right time to protect her is now. So far, more than 7 million Americans have received Gardasil injections. The study identifies 12,000 medical problems after vaccination. Most are mild, dizziness, headache, and fainting. But there are more than 700 reports of serious medical problems, including blood clots, autoimmune disorders, and 32 cases of death. These are initial reports, and I don't think that we can assume a necessarily a cause and effect relationship, as many of these women had other underlying medical conditions. Most doctors I know have stopped giving this vaccine because of the safety issues around it now. As a gynecologist, Dr. Jacques Moritz sees the deadly effects of cervical cancer. He is also the father of an 11 year old daughter. I'm not going to have my daughter vaccinated right now. Why not? Because I think there's other ways to prevent cervical cancer, the old standards, pap smear, routine exams, and this vaccine, I just don't know enough about it yet. Making the decision to vaccinate all the more difficult for many parents and pediatricians. I feel that we don't have enough information or data yet to be able to say that this will prevent cervical cancer. For Good Morning America, John McKenzie, ABC News, New York. The controversy is clear here. Let's bring in from Boston ABC News Chief Medical Editor Dr. Tim Johnson. And Dr. Tim, the headline for me here is that this is the first time that even you say so confounding you can't make a recommendation. As you know, Chris, I'm very much in favor of all other childhood vaccines, but in this case, I don't think we let yet know the long-term benefits or risks. It does prevent HPV. PV infection that should prevent cervical cancer long term. The risk we still don't know long term. So I'm taking a pass on this one and saying to parents, look, study the issue, read the editorial in the journal this week. It's a great editorial. Talk to your doctor about it and maybe wait a little bit like Dr. Moritz is going to do. Don't jump into this one because I think we still have a lot to learn. So why isn't the directive simply don't do it? It's risky because we know it does what it says, it prevents HPV infections, and we know that some parents are very concerned about that and want to prevent that, hoping it will prevent cervical cancer. They have a right to do it. It's approved by the FDA. It's not wildly dangerous. We already know that. So that's your choice. I'm not saying it's a bad choice. I'm just not prepared to make a recommendation. So you have to inform yourself. Dr. Tim, thank you very oh, much. On this one for sure, yeah. So if, if you want more information out there, go to abcnews.com. There's information about the vaccine there for you.